Pastor Jarrett here, and I just want to weigh in this Robbie Zachariah situation. Now, well, let me first say, Robbie Zachariah did do a lot of good things for the kingdom of God. Uh, people forget that he was able to win people to Christ. Um, people forget that he created apologetic ministry that has really uh, spread the kingdom of God and has trained a lot of good leaders. Unfortunately, at the same time, he was uh, living a destructive, uh, hidden life. And it's sad. Uh, it is heartbreaking. Uh, for, for some of you, I know you are angry and you're furious about it. Um, you feel like your world has been shaken. And I understand that. Uh, for such a man that we thought was a very godly man to find out that he was so entrenched in this sin against women, it is unbelievable. And so let me first say, I completely understand how everyone is feeling. The second thing uh, I want to say is, I think we're making a mistake of what we can learn from the situation. Because what a lot of us are doing is we're doing, we're acting as if we need to get back at Ravi. That, that, that's why I really think a lot of people, how people are responding, how they are uh, disassociating themselves with his books, disassociating themselves from his uh, RZIM, his ministry. Um, this is not, this is just to some degree, it's PR, it's just public relations, you know, people don't want to be associated with this group, but they are, they are associated with it. And yes, this ministry made a mistake, they did not keep their leader accountable. But this is not to say that there wasn't truth in his book. This is not to say that his ministry didn't do good work. It's just in the midst of doing good work, they were also sinning. And this is unfortunate. And I think a lot of us think, well, we just need to throw away our books like Mike Winger is doing and like other people are doing. And they just want to get away from this ministry and, and just spoon out their anger and hate and frustration. Uh, and to some degree, I understand this, but I don't think this is what we can best learn from the situation. I think we need to realize that we made Ravi into someone he wasn't. In other words, we raise him up as this is a guy who has it all together. This guy is beyond reproach and created possibly even a dangerous situation that people were elevated to a position that he shouldn't have been. Uh, that there, and that he was still a sinful man who still had all the temptations of humanity and did, were, did not have accountability around him and did not have people that held him accountable and have accountability partners. He needed these things and it wasn't there for him. And that is a problem. And so... That's the truth about him. And I think a lot of us are stumbling. A lot of us are trying to retract ourselves, trying to disassociate, trying to throw our book because we're just so angry and frustrated with him. The how could this hero of ours fall so far? And to some of us, that might, that might mean is we need to repent ourselves that we elevated him to such a high degree. And to some degree, yes, the, the, the ministries need to repent for not holding him accountable. Certainly. But I'm starting to become concerned because of how we're approaching it. Like I said, Mike Winger is has thrown away his books from Ravi. And I understand he doesn't want to say he doesn't want to say he is endorses him he and maybe some people think well i don't want to show that uh 
I endorse him. I tell you what, if you look at the church, the church throughout church history, some of its heroes have also been its most flawed people. And we have not retracted ourselves from them. A lot of people don't realize that John Calvin could be very much a legalist at times and very harsh with people at times. Martin Luther was, in the end of his life, was an anti Semite. Jonathan Edwards owned slaves. And that's just modern church. But if we go back in time to the Bible, the Bible's full of flaw people. Now, some people have brought up David and Bathsheba and that God forgave and restored him. Now, the only thing in that case is David actually turned repent. We don't know with Robbie if that was happening. But keep in mind, even if we put that issue aside, David was still a flawed person without that. Remember, he was a polygamist. Solomon was a polygamist. Throughout the Bible, you have law people. Jonah, the prophet Jonah, was a flawed person. He was a prophet, but very flawed. And you actually don't know what he chooses at the end. And if we start pulling at this thread, like we got to get rid of Ravi's books, and we need to disassociate ourselves with Ravi's ministry, if you start pulling out that thread, you're going to have to start pulling out the thread of, well, I guess we can't, can't quote Martin Luther anymore. We'll pull on the thread of Jonathan Edwards. We, got, we can't quote him anymore. We got to pull out the thread, well, I guess we can't quote John Calvin anymore. Uh, you might pull out the thread of Martin Luther King Jr. Because he had affairs also. And do we start pulling out the thread of, flawed people in the Bible. And see, I think this leads us to a dangerous place where we are want to remove ourselves from any flawed people. And the problem with that, to remove yourself from any flawed people, you would have to remove yourself from the world. And what we're really acting is, we're acting self-righteously. And we just need to repent of that. We need to repent of saying, Robbie was at air and therefore he is at And we're acting as if he's, at, he's done the unparable sin. And don't get me wrong. He, what he did was sinful and wrong and evil. Don't get me wrong here. But the way we're treating the situation can lead us to a dangerous situation where we're going to remove any appearance of evil doing. Now, my other concern is this. What does the outside world see? Now, it does see us correcting this guy, but the outside world says, the church, if I make a mistake like this, they will attack me. If I make this place, they will remove me. And what it shows is we have no humility. It shows we have no grace and mercy over the situation. It says we are not allowing God to be the judge, but we are looking to be the judge. And this is a dangerous direction for us to take. The other thing I would like to say is, Ultimately, I agree with Dr. Michael Brown. I don't agree often about what he says. But one of the things I agree with says is that we're, we're not looking at what are the lessons we should learn from the situation. I mean, first we need to learn from the situation of we need to hold our leaders accountable for the action. And that, you, that our leaders need to have accountability partners. And I need people who they can confess to. That, that our leaders need people. We need to be 
praying for our leaders to be to keep safe from the, the snares of the evil one in his life. We need to be doing this for our leaders. But another thing we need to be learning is how is a church protecting the most vulnerable in our church and in our ministries? How are we protecting women? How are we protecting children? This is something we can actively do to help prevent this situation from ever happening again. Ultimately, more personally, how are you allowing secret sin in your life to cultivate in your life? What secret sin do you need to repent of? You know, often we get so focused about that person's sin and so we need to focus on what is my sin? What do I need to change? What do I need to repent of? Because God is Robbie's judge and God will be our judge also. And how are we taking care of the sin in our lives? And how are we repenting of those sins? This is an important thing. Now, will I get rid of my Robbie Zacharias books? Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. It depends on how you look at it. I never had a Robbie Zacharias book. I knew of him. I knew of his ministry. But I never owned a book of his. The closest thing I have of Robbie Zacharias is the chapter and Case for Faith. Am I going to get rid of my book for Case for Faith? No. Because the information, the 95% of the book is good. And even that 5% of Robbie is still a good chapter. It just is being spoken by a very flawed, sinful human being. And maybe would I have to explain this? Certainly. But I'm, I won't throw away my book. And if I had a Robbie Zachariah book, as long as it has good content, I probably wouldn't throw it away. If someone asked me about it, I'd say, well, yes, he was sinful, he was wrong, I don't endorse what he said, but the material in here is still good. And so I wouldn't throw it away. If I had tie if I had given offerings to Robbie Zacharias, I wouldn't hide that or um or anything. Um because none of that is going to help the women. It really isn't. The only way we're doing this, where it makes us feel good about the situation. And if it's just about us trying to feel good about the situation, like somehow by owning this book, it's harming people. It really is. And I, 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 I hate to say owning that book is not harming people. And throwing it away isn't helping people either. To be honest, it's not hurting or harming anyone to have that book. Uh, there are tons of books in your bookstore, in your library, written by flawed, sinful human beings. Shakespeare would be one. Aristotle, Plato, th these are all flawed people. Do, do we still have it in our libraries? Do we still have our, some of our bookshelves? Certainly. Because if there's something truthful and we can learn from it, it's, it's to be valued. The author was flawed. The author was sinful. Given, do we endorse him by having the book? I don't think so. And again, I'm worried about the, what it does to our church when we start saying that person is anathema and that person's anathema. It, it leads us to a dangerous direction. And who is the next person we're going to say is that person is anathema that we will have nothing to do with them. That person committed the unpardonable sin, according to us. That's not a healthy place to go. We need to learn the lessons we can. We need to right the wrongs that we can. But we need to be careful of going into council culture because it can end up destroying the church or be used to attack the church then help the church. So these are just some of my few thoughts about this Robbie Zacharias. I could be wrong, but I don't think we're approaching this the right way.